Let's start with our clean signal. This is just the Etherwave theremin, which is just off screen a little bit. Now it's an analog circuit. So it's only capable of producing a few different waveforms. And it has a filter. A pleasing one, I might add. It also has a pitch knob for tuning and a volume knob um, for setting your gain, your maximum gain. Um, if I were playing this in a conventional setting, I would tune it differently, but for tuning it to perform for Bubblegum Octopus, I kind of set the pitch field at the edge of what the pedals are, so that as long as my hands are over here doing something for the theremin, I'm getting a sound from the theremin. Um, I'm not doing a ton of melodic playing, so doing things with actual intonation on a more precise scale, um, no pun intended, is not totally necessary. So the first thing I set up is this pedal here, and that is my Catalan bread, I think that's pronounced. Dirty little secret. It's um, a Marshall clone looking overdrive sounding, looking because of the knobs, but um, sounding because of how it's trying to sound. Um, it makes everything a little bit dirtier and it also creates a maximum volume for my uh, signal. So even if I don't mix these perfectly, I'll still have a maximum point at which it won't get any louder. So, without and with. And you know, it makes everything a little bit dirtier and again does that very helpful thing where it keeps the, my volume pretty consistent. It also has its own tone knob. Which is fantastic. And of course it has this volume knob. Inside of it, there's a dip switch for treble to add more high end, I think. I actually switched that like 10 years ago and I have no idea what would happen if I unswitched it. So maybe I'll have to experiment with that sometime. Moving along, we have this. This is our next important step. I gotta set it so that I don't get any sound when it that light is on. And I mentioned this in the other post about my pedals, but um, the reason I like this, aside from just I really like the way it looks, is it's big, I won't miss it, uh, it's easy to push, especially with this thing that has broken off so that the spring is just going wild. Um, and I could probably shoot it with a cannon and it would survive. So I keep it. I've tried other little, I may have even mentioned this in that post too, I've like built my own smaller bypass pedals, whatever you want to call it, cut off, and it, was, it would sit here where Jigglypuff is and just be one little thing. Um, but it was just really inaccurate and I did not enjoy it. Um, not worth it to me to get the extra pedal out of it. All right, so next, my Boss DD7 that I've had for a very, very long time. I switched the faceplate around, but that's not to hide what it is. I will tell anybody. I also spray painted it. Again, just aesthetic. I'm very mindful of, uh, I like to make sure I like the way things look when I use them, especially in a context where everything is going to be so visible. Um, and I also have it memorized, like I know what all the settings are. I don't need to see what the knobs do, because I know. I can do all that stuff, whatever. Um, I leave it on the analog setting, just in case you have a DD7 and you want to imitate exactly what I'm doing for whatever reason. Um, I've tried the other ones. And sometimes I'll do something with the really long setting, um, like the beginning of Tough, I have that Pedal Beats Dream or whatever I called it, which I just made by doing stuff like... Alright, 
so you get the idea. Next thing, another boss pedal, the Boss PS5 Super Shifter, which I've had to replace right before a show before. I usually keep it, um, the default that I have it set for is instantly going up the setting called T-Arm, going up two octaves. You can also go to down two octaves. And of course it does have other settings too. We have, I won't go through them all, but we can do this wiggly thing. And I can do different harmonizing things. Next, I'm going to go with the WMD Geiger counter, which is a wavetable-based modulation distortion bit crushing uh, pedal. It's a little bit beyond me fully understanding, but basically um, it's distorting it like crazy and it's modulating that through different waveforms. And there's like 252 waveforms in here. Um, I've labeled which ones I like for theremin and for guitar, but uh, that is just so I never forget. Yeah, let's hear it. First I showed you with um, just the Geiger counter alone, and then I added this to show that it made the volume go lower, um, or the apparent volume, uh, and also to show it in context. Next we have the Way Huge Ringworm, which is just a ring modulation pedal. <laughs> But, spoiler alert, it's actually not just a ring modulation pedal, because we have an LFO slash envelope generator that can control the carrier frequency. <laughs> And then last, we have possibly the strangest part of this whole setup, which is the Ono Ho Utter Stutter, going into a Boss ME50B, which you can see underneath this label that I got glitter paint all over. It is a feedback, this thing is, um, feedback pedal looper that alternates between bypassing 
and creating the feedback loop. So when I turn it on, you'll see this light going back and forth, showing us which mode it's on and the rate at which it's doing that. But I won't get sound right away. Um, this also is one of the big reasons I have this here, because unlike these other pedals where I can control the final output fairly easily, the feedback loop is kind of contingent on being loud or else it won't create a sound. So I set up kind of what I like on this in terms of EQ and settings for gain, but in the process of making this react, I sometimes have to turn things up and it can get pretty unruly. So when I turn this off, there might just be a clicking sound or something. You don't always get sounds just straight out of the gate. I'll turn this noise suppressor off just to make sure maybe I do get some sound, but we'll see. So as you can see, nothing. It's just kind of a weird um, modulating effect. But once you start adding stuff, you start getting sounds. As you can see, you get kind of a lot of sounds out of that. Um, and the reason that is, is because I basically have an EQ, a compressor, a filter, a distortion, and this modulation pedal, and this multi-mode thing that does wah resonance, octave up and down, and also a kick drum sound, which I'll show you just cause, why not? Do without delay. Um, so, you know, I always have that option if I really want to. Um, it also has a sound hold, which sometimes I like to use when I'm improvising. Because now I have that frequency to build with, too. But, in addition to being there for that kind of stuff, I can also just use it to make the theremin sound different. That's basically it. I mean, the main thing about this is setting the level here, making sure that this is activated in such a way that this knob is all the way at the end, basically. So that's a, a cutoff pedal instead of 
functioning the way it's kind of supposed to. Um, setting my rate for my delay, making sure that I like this setting, that its level is adjusted correctly, um, making sure that this matches my starting point. Um, and I really like having these labels um, because it makes sure I'm always hitting my starting point. See, I am looking at it now. It's not at my starting point. No, it is. Easy. I don't have to think about it. Um, this one, I have to kind of actually know what I'm doing, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, you do this enough, you know what you're doing for all of them. It's just nice to have reminders. That label here that I took off, um, but will actually be there in the demonstration pre glitter spill, um, is so that I make sure that I get exactly what I want because feedback looping is pretty unpredictable and it's good to have a guaranteed way to get how I want it. Um, you get in the heat of the moment with the performance and I have MIDI controllers and vocals and being entertaining I suppose to do and that kind of all takes away from any individual technical aspect that I have to think about. So. Um, backup plans, A+. Plus. I'm happy to do more of this, and I'd actually, if people are interested, do a stream of either just noise or some other synth stuff, but um, as I get more comfortable doing video, it may be obvious that I don't like being on video, because I'm not, except for my hands. Um, maybe I can do more stuff, more demonstrations of stuff, more descriptions, more audio examples, with a, a live element, um, and yeah, I don't know. Feel free to give me some feedback on this. And speaking of feedback, now I will probably cue in the uh, original demonstration of improvisation that I did.